Еще раз добрый день, коллеги. Я рад вас приветствовать на этой сессии. So, dear colleagues, we're going to start our session, and today we'll talk about the management of urban development, successful interaction between municipal and regional administrations. So, this um, workshop is organized as part of the conference on the Russian cities, which is in turn organized during the fourth Moscow Urban Forum. So this is the conference on Russian cities, and it is for the first time that the regional developments are discussed at the forum. The reason why this topic was brought to our attention, first of all, because um, we do not really talk too much about regional development, but the basic elements of, and of the federal system and all of all of the financial flows are of course the russian regions and inside of these uh, regions the main or the major drivers of economic growth are the cities so the cities concentrate the most active part of the population and the cities of course drive forward economic progress so that is why the cities should become the center point of the attention the cities should become the most important drivers in the overall development of the country. But as you probably know, any city is uh, quite complex. It operates uh, on different levels at the municipal, regional and federal level. So in the existing uh, system of federal governance, the Cities are viewed as regions and not as self-sustained management entities. So again, today we wanted to discuss municipal and regional development programs which are being implemented in the Russian cities. We would like to evaluate the consequences of reforms being introduced at the municipal and regional levels. We also would like to touch upon the topic of how the public authorities can facilitate the process of urban development and the process of the development of human capital. So how do we realize all of these projects as part of the urban strategy? How do we distribute it among all of the public authorities? How do we introduce the new policy of land use, urban development, urban planning, and so on and so forth? So I would like to introduce the speakers today. So Irek Ilalov, head of the UFA city administration. Republic of Bashkortostan is also represented by Alexander Vasiliev, the Minister of Economic Development of the Bashkortostan Republic. We also have here with us Alexander Moore, the head of the Tumen City Administration. And so the mayor of Yekaterinburg, yeah, Evgeny Roizman. We also have an expert panel here, Alexander Vysokovsky, professor and the dean of the Higher School of Urban Studies in the Higher School of Economics, and Andrei Klimenko, professor, head of the Institute of Municipal and Regional Governance in the Higher School of Economics. So I would like to start this session by asking everybody a question. Maybe we'll start uh, with Evgeny first. We know that Yekaterinburg developed quite an interesting system. So I think that in the last 18 to 20 years, the city uh, has been managed by quite a powerful mayor. So the entire governance system was basically in the hands of the mayor. In 2010, the urban administration was split into the city manager institute and the uh, mayoral institute and uh, the mayor is uh, the head of the city which is being elected by the municipal duma so could you please tell me whether this system has been successful if we do not look at it from the political point of view but if we evaluate it as an instrument of management Good afternoon, dear colleagues. But, well, in order for us to start a productive discussion on the topic, well, we have to actually start calling a spade a spade. So this uh, was a targeted policy. 
aiming to neutralize powerful mayoral institutes. I think that it was first introduced by Mayor Surkov and other mayors of large uh, cities, where the mayors were uh, basically putting quite a lot of pressure on the administration, and they were making offers which uh, the cities could not refuse. It was also done through power enforcement authorities. And I think in Ekaterinburg, we had quite a glaring example of that. So that's why we introduced the Institute of the City Manager, who was an elected, who was elected to this position among the municipal MPs. So the city manager was able to operate within the team. And what we had in that, we had a job opening of the mayor of the city. So I had to become the mayor so that uh, no outsiders can come in and exercise the power. And I think the situation in my city at present is as follows, basically. I made sure that the city manager remains at his position, and especially because he's slightly older than me and he uh, has a much better understanding of uh, the urban economy. I'm trying not to interfere too much with the work of the team. And um, sometimes I do certain things uh, or I fulfill certain duties which um, they cannot fulfill, but of course, if uh, there is a conflict, I do not really think that it will lead to um, a collapse of the city, but I do, I do believe that the city manager is uh, not probably the best institution because it uh, basically diminishes the responsibility. The residents are not really aware who the responsible party is, so I don't really think that this is an efficient system. I just think it overcomplicates the state of things. And of course, I have much more to say on the subject, but let me first listen to what the colleagues have to say. Thank you very much. My next question is to the head of UFA. And I should probably also address it to the Minister of Economic Development of Bashkortostan. I have to say that in the recent years, UFA has been undergoing quite a rapid development. You brought in a lot of initiatives on innovative development, on the development of the city. And I think the entire city administration and uh, municipal administrations take part in this program. So as part of this strategy, or within this strategy, what is the role of the regional administration? What sort of um, mechanisms are used in this strategy? And of, um, I, of course, I'm talking about management mechanism. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I have to tell you that when it comes to the city of Ufa, just uh, as my colleague has said, we also have the Institute of City Managers. The city manager is not appointed, but it, he is rather elected by the MPs of the municipal councils. So I've been working in the city of Udu city for the last 15 years, and in this time I've been working in the economic sector. So if you talk about the municipal administration, of UFA, especially in regards to conflicts that we witness in other regions, I have to say that we do not really have any such problems since both um, I and uh, the President of the Republic are part of one team. We have common objectives, which is uh, the development of the Republic and in our city. So each year we hold large-scale uh, conferences or large-scale events that facilitate team building. And of course, it is only possible when we involve the Republican authorities as well as the municipal authorities. As you know, in July, there'll be a BRICS summit in UFA, so we will be hosting more than 20 presidents from the largest countries of the world. So we've been working quite a lot on this objective, so we haven't been really concentrating on the politics, but on uh, this particular project. But if I start talking about the developments of uh, UFA, I have to uh, first make it clear for you what UFA is. I think UFA is an extremely unique city, both in terms of its um, ethnic composition and in terms of its demographics. It is the only city where more than half of the residents are younger than 30 years old. Our growth was 
54,000 people uh, last year. So now we have uh, about 1.4 million people, probably 1.6 million people in the entire agglomeration of EU farm. So we have been working together with the Ministry of Economic Development of the Republic and the Ministry of Industry on developing the strategy of the development of cities. So we defined four agglomerations, the largest being the Ufa agglomeration. And I think probably all of you know that Ufa is the only city in the Russian Federation, apart from Moscow, which is a hub for two major federal highways. And also you probably remember when the Ufa airfield was built back in the Soviet times. Well, it was built for the Buran shuttle. And even the Boeings were able to land at the Ufa airports back in Soviet times. Another thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to the municipal administration or municipal management, I have to tell you that in my opinion, since our team is running really smooth, maybe we're not running as precisely as Swiss watches, but probably as precise as a Soviet watch. But I just came back from China where I signed an agreement with uh, two cities, each of them with more than 5, 000, 5 million citizens. I believe that the Chinese model was quite unique. In China, the mayor is also a, a deputy head of the Communist Party. So all of the members of the administration are appointed by the party. They also spent a lot of effort trying to solve the financial woes of the cities. And the Communist Party of China decided that 33% of the budget should be spent, uh, should be given to the um, central uh, uh, governments and 33% to the regional governments, whereas 33% should be given to the municipal governments. This allowed uh, Chinese cities to develop fully, I think, because it contributes to the emergence of a completely unique economic landscape. And if you know, in Yufa, we had a city administration, we had uh, seven municipal districts, we have been functioning like this for three years, but we do believe that the system is rather ineffective. Our districts do not really carry much authority. We do not really have district MPs. We only have 36 MPs to the municipal council. We had head of administration or, uh, as they call him, city manager. So as I told you, the team is running smoothly. The administration of the municipal council is the smallest among the cities in Russia with a population of one million citizens. What did we manage to achieve? Well, we've been acknowledged as uh, the best city when it comes to solving emergency situation or preparing for winter for two years running. The Ministry of the Environment of Russia recognized UFA administration is, is the most effective in Russia when it comes to environmental issues. So we were not actively pursuing this rating, to tell you honestly, but it is one of our achievements. So again, we are, I think, emerging as one of the leaders in the Russian Federation. I think we're number three when it comes to new construction per 100,000 inhabitants. Thank you very much. I think Evgeny has feedback. Well, to tell you the truth, I really agree with my colleague. This division or this split which is being offered as part of the reform, we already had it in St. Petersburg, we already had seven municipal districts, so basically we got rid of all of the councils, we got rid of the city council, which had 300 MPs, and in our districts we had 100 MPs in each district, and as you can imagine, we couldn't really pass a single decision, so we managed to get rid of this system, which is now being proposed again. and. Um, Basically, we created a, a metropolis area, so the city became a single organism. So this is something that we live through again, but we don't want to go back to what we used to have. Another example of UFA is that in UFA they have the lowest number of municipal civil servants, which is 1.2 per 1,000 citizens. This is the best indicator. In Yekaterinburg is 
following you far 1.5 people per thousand citizens uh, Volgograd is 3.5 Novosibirsk and Krasnoyarsk just to illustrate the point thank you very much I would like to use this opportunity and to uh, invite uh, uh, Alexander Vasilev, the Minister of Economic Development of the Bashkortostan uh, Republic. So I would like him uh, to comment on behalf of the regional authorities on So I would like to see whether you are using a top-down approach when when a region is setting indicators or when the region is uh, studying the indicators, how do you build a strategy of municipal development? Thank you very much for your question. Good afternoon, everyone. When, if we start talking about strategic planning, then uh, all of the strategic planning is regulated by the federal law on strategic planning, so we have a clear understanding which strategic documents should be developed both at the federal, municipal and regional levels. But so we did encounter a number of complex issues and to continue what the previous speaker has said, I have to say that unfortunately when it comes to federal legislation, I do believe that the federal legislation imposes serious constraints on the decision making ability of regional municipal authorities or so basically they are closing all of the loopholes that exist or any opportunities that exist for them to make an independent decision to give you an example I also have to mention the municipal reform which is being discussed in the state Duma is you know creating municipal districts in the cities with a population of over 1 million citizens so let I would say let maybe give it back to the cities let's make this norm not a mandatory but let's make it a possibility so let's give the citizens the right to decide how their city will function whether it will have municipal districts or whether it will decide uh, to move into the future without them another thing that i wanted to say about the federal legislation is that it imposes constraints on the development of certain strategic documents. Let me tell you about the interaction between regional and municipal administrations. I would also give you an example of how we are working with UFA. So when it comes to cooperation, well, I have to say that the cooperation between the regional and municipal administration today is the same as the cooperation between federal and regional administrations. We believe that when it comes to the municipality, we are a stakeholder with our own objectives and these objectives are vested in our strategic documents and of course these objectives has, have to be taken into account when we develop the strategy for social and economic development of municipalities. So the first issue is that so we have to agree on the objective. The second issue is the methodological approach to development strategies. doesn't matter which developments we're talking about, whether it's social or economic, it doesn't really matter, but what it is important is that if a single methodological approach is used to set um, priorities and then each of the municipal administration decides to uh, implement their own methodologies, then of course we will not move anywhere. For now we are managing to control the situation, but we do see that uh, when uh, other methodological approaches used. We don't think that it's something to be scared of, but we do believe that uh, coordination and concordance uh, should be found. Another issue is, of course, the implementation of the strategy. As you know, any strategy entails a number of projects that should be developed. As you know, we have a law on general principles of uh, self-regulation. So some of these authority is vested in the municipal administration so we do implement some projects jointly and some of these projects of course are part of the regional and federal programs as well as part of municipal programs 
so that allows us to understand how we're going to improve the quality of life, how we're going to improve the competitiveness of our economy. And so we are trying to facilitate a coordinated policy. So my colleague already mentioned that we're going to organize large-scale international events in UFA. So we, we were trying to decide whether this BRICS summit will be held in the Republic of Bashkortostan or UFA. Then we realized that we do not really have to make this decision. So the development policy for Bashkortostan is now coordinated between the municipal and regional administration. So sometimes uh, it is the municipal administration that is helping us, and not just in UFA, but in other cities in the uh, Republic. So whether they are the driving force or uh, whether we are the driving force, it doesn't really matter. So if we have more cloud on a certain market, so we enter into the market first, and then uh, the municipality follows in our step. When it comes to cooperation with UFA, I have to underline that what's important for us is not just to coordinate the objectives, the objectives of urban developments, the developments of the Republic, but what's also important is that we understand that currently UFAR is a development driver or a growth, growth driver of all of the municipalities around UFAR all of the satellite municipalities. So, of course, here we're talking about the feasibility, whether it's feasible to develop an overall strategy for the UFA um, agglomeration. Right now, we're talking about 1.5 million people, more or less, according to different estimates. But this is 40% uh, more than uh, the citizens of UFA. So if we do manage to implement a coordinated policy, especially on all of the strategic projects, then I don't really think that we'll have any problems when it comes to the lack of land so to build a new infrastructure or to settle the land use problems between the regional and municipal administrations we do not we will not have any problems with residential construction so I can tell you for now we do have sufficient land resources but this is something we have to coordinate uh, we need to agree not only on the goals we need also to get uh, the peripheral areas involved and to uh, obtain some uh, synergy effect from a joint work. Thank you. I would like to ask another question, a follow-up question regarding development of city agglomerations. It's an interesting point because agglomerations as an object or subject of management uh, they're not clearly defined in laws and there are different approaches uh, in different regions uh, on how to manage those agglomerations. Uh, in Belgorod, for example, we heard they're going to experiment, they're, they're toying with the creation of agglomeration as a single municipal entity. Uh, in other regions, it's done through intermunicipal uh, cooperation agreements. How do you see uh, the management mechanisms? How can we work with the city agglomerations? What mechanisms can we use? Thank you. Our region differs from other regions uh, in the sense that we have uh, unique uh, locations of cities and towns in the Republic of Bashkortostan. Uh, they're about 40, 120 kilometers away from each other. So we have a system in place. If you look back at our history, not our history, but uh, world history, uh, ancient Greece, uh, cities in ancient Greece were located in such a way so that a person, a marathon runner, could easily, with an, uh, an adequate uh, span of time, reach another town uh, and communicate that information to another city, another town. Uh, in Bashkortostan, the location of our towns and cities is unique. Uh, we can have uh, uh, more efficient communication between the towns. Um, speaking about agglomeration, it is not only larger Ufa. In this hall, we have representatives of several municipalities uh, involved in another agglomeration, southern Bashkortostan agglomeration. Three cities located closely to each other and uh, f forming the foundation for the industrial complex. Uh, 
distribution complex, uh, petrochemical co complex I'm talking about. He used to be uh, a driver of the Soviet petrochemical industry back in the Soviet days. So when we uh, made presentation at the city agglomeration competition, we decided to go ahead not with larger Ufas expected, but with southern Bashkortostan agglomeration, uh, encompassing three towns, which are about 30 kilometers away from each other, and another municipal area that supports uh, those uh, cities with agricultural products. So what we did, uh, we signed an agreement uh, between heads of municipalities. The Republic is standing by. Uh, we are trying to act uh, uh, as a link between these three towns in defining their common interests, in defining their um, common ground. And we also stand ready to support them financially. We're talking about more efficient ways to manage agglomeration, agglomerations through uh, agreements between different municipalities. Thank you. I would like to address the next question to Mr. Moore, uh, representative of head of Tumin uh, City Administration. A question on the administrative system in Tumin, a well-known uh, rushing nestling doll, uh, whereby city, region, within the region, autonomous districts uh, work closely together, interact uh, quite successfully. And in the governor's ratings, in the city's ratings, Tumen and the Tumen district, Tumen region uh, really stand high in all those rankings. Could you please tell us in terms of uh, city management system and and urban management, urban area management. If we focus on urban area, because Tumen is a city with high quality urban uh, infrastructure, urban area, uh, what management tools, managerial tools uh, do you use uh, between in interaction between the city and the region? Uh, how can the region be involved apart from uh, regional subsidies? Maybe through fiscal mechanisms or maybe some other mechanisms of partnership with business community. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. A few words about uh, how things are done in Tumen. Uh, we do have a city manager. I'm a city manager. I'm, we, we also have the head of the city authority uh, elected directly from among the members of the city Duma. And similar to Bashkiria, uh, we represent uh, an example of efficient interaction between the city and the regional authorities. Uh, it's easy for me to talk about this because I've been in, been working with the city administration for four years. Before that, for five years, I'd been uh, a deputy mayor. Uh, I was in charge of investment, so I'm the right person to speak on this topic. Sixty percent of the city's budget comes from the uh, regional uh, means, regional sources all the talks about investing greater independence to cities and municipalities. Uh, all these talks, uh, you know, uh, it's just a matter of uh, pleasing the mayors and increasing their personal clout and financial clout. Uh, effective interaction is possible under any arrangements. Uh, of cooperation between the cities and regional authorities uh, because it's a matter of people. Our governor comes from Niftikamsk. Uh, we work as uh, within the same team and uh, our interaction model is similar to that from Ufa. In our case, the work structure is very simple. Our budgets are formed uh, simultaneously. 95% of the main city budget uh, is based on the program principle. We protect, we safeguard our events uh, before the uh, regional structures. Once they're approved, they're uh, integrated into the plan and we start seeking fun funding. And we adopt budgets. Uh, there's only one month difference between the uh, adoption of two budgets. Uh, of course, it's a matter of interaction between the governor and uh, 
seat administrator. Uh, uh, if, when worse comes to worse, uh, we could uh, come face to face, and it may be a damper uh, on the city's development. We were one of the first to change the model. We used to have an elected mayor. Uh, he, in the past, and to Maine and to Maine city residents didn't feel anything following the change in this in the structure, although they still confuse themselves. Who is the mayor, uh, head of the city or head of the administ administration? It's an insignificant detail which is not affecting the efficiency of the authorities' operations uh, because all the responsibilities uh, are clearly defined. Everybody knows what to do and people interact with each other if need be. So that's, I, I don't want to take too much of your time, so that's, I'll, uh, there will be comments by Evgeny Roisman. Well, I must admit that Tumin is lucky because they never had this confrontation and all Tumin governors have always uh, uh, viewed Tumin as the region, regional capital, not as a city they need to uh, win. So we can only uh, envy Tumin in this regard. Thank you. Another comment. Yes, having listened to my colleague, uh, actually, I started working. I worked as a minister of utilities and housing in the regional government. Uh, it's not so much a matter of interaction between municipalities and the republic regional authorities. It's the. Uh, it's a matter of uh, finding the right people and putting them at the right places. We need to educate, to nurture staff. Before that, I was first deputy head of the city. I was in charge of housing, utilities, and road construction issues. I can tell you responsibly that in order to train um, a professional uh, expert in the urban utilities area, it will take you more than 10 years, at least 10 years. So it's a matter of uh, human resource policy of the Russian Federation. Uh, bef until and unless we start realizing that for each more or less significant position in a large city, we need to train special personnel. We need to nurture them, uh, like in greenhouses, um, uh, like uh, you know. If we just uh, want to to try our luck, it's not the right policy. Referring to the example of China, even though they have one party, one ideology, uh, human resource. Human resources development uh, is on top of their agenda. It's absolutely number one point on their agenda. If we refer to one of the famous people who said that uh, human resources uh, make a world of difference. Next question. I would like to support uh, uh, the point made on the human resources. Uh, today we're discussing uh, relations between the capital city mayor and the governor. Uh, there are separate type of uh, relations because governor lives in the city. He sees what's happening in the city. If we talk about the relations between the mayors of other non-capital cities and their relations with the governor, it's slightly different uh, area. Yes, it's a different area because there are many municipal municipalities, there are different cities. The quality of management in different cities is different, not always high. If I were a governor, I would uh, I would not, I would leave this interaction model, uh, I would leave it intact because this model uh, uh, enables governor to be uh, actively involved uh, because if we uh, allow not very professional, not very qualified people to manage finances, if we invest all those authorities into them, it won't be a good thing. Thank you, thank you. And next question to uh, to Mr. Klimenka, I would like to ask him to comment or uh, maybe to speak on the existing uh, management or administration, Russian seat administration uh, systems, uh, advantages, disadvantages, uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, and, and, and the changes that we've seen in the uh, seat administration systems. I would like to uh, respond to what my colleagues have said. I think a very interesting factor they refer to, it's very important to have personal interaction between heads of uh, constituent territories of the Russian Federation and the cities. 
understanding of the problems that they face together. In this regard, many present here, if, 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 if I'm right, uh, they went through rotation period, so they worked at the level uh, of the constituent territories, so they understand the problems of the constituent territories, and once they become involved with the city operations, they, uh, they can do that more effectively, realizing the challenges facing the regions. Speaking about uh, pressing, the most pressing issues today that, that must be addressed uh, expeditiously and that have crop up, cropped up this year, uh, and always a pressing issue, division of authorities, allocation of authorities, the issue of financing, uh, because this issue never goes away. It's always pressing. In 2013, for example, uh, in about 40 constituent territories, uh, more authorities were granted to the municipal levels. In 20 constituent territories, uh, the number of authorities uh, granted to the uh, municipal authorities was decreased. Lack of financing is an uh, overarching problem that all regions face, and there are uh, clear budgetary limitations. We need to look for ways uh, to streamline uh, costs, as we say. What people mean by that, uh, they mean cost cutting. So that's the nature of cost optimization, cost streamlining. This should allow us to find some palatable solutions in terms of, in, in the context of uh, budgetary limitations, because um, offices differ, they, 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 they work with varying degrees of efficiency. The new things that have emerged. Uh, some people have mentioned some of these new developments. I'm talking about develop uh, interaction between the constituent territory and the city or town, so municipal level interaction. Uh, we also mentioned, we heard uh, a strategic planning law, uh, a law number 172. Uh, many constituent territories and cities have been agreeing on their strategic plans for a long time, so have been, uh, have been agreeing upon their strategies for a long time. But this document provides for many new documents and requirements. For example, forecast of socioeconomic development, uh, budget forecast, uh, now uh, municipal programs, uh, programs of constituent territories must be agreed upon. Many constituent territories are already doing that as part of their uh, regional management system. I would like to disagree. Uh, it's been said that the law has already set the stage. Well, actually, the law has, has only outlined the stage, hasn't set the stage, uh, because we, we're going to use this as a tool to reach our uh, goals. Uh, so that's an open question, or whether it will just uh, uh, create additional paperwork. Speaking about interaction, there's another point to be made. We should take a broader look than we're doing now, uh, namely uh, to assess authorities at various level. Uh, we have a very complicated assessment system. For territorial authorities, regional authorities, municipal authorities, municipal entities, uh, we already had a uh, degree decrease 825 607 they were repealed now a new system has been introduced but it shows that all the fine details have been ironed out if we look at the various levels of the same organism using different uh, measurement systems and assessment systems that will lead to conflicts even in those regions uh, where there is good understanding between the city authorities and regional authorities. Thank you. There will be a comment from uh, our panelist. Paradox. Lack of money actually stimulates uh, brain activity. Uh, second year in a row, 
in the Russian Federation, we've been uh, taking second spots in the Forbes ranking in terms of uh, best place for doing business in, their, in this rank, ranking. We invest heavily into the city economy. 104 billion rubles will be invested this year. 90% will come from private investors. 90% will come from private investors. If you go, if you visit Ufa uh, now, if you look at the uh, landmark uh, developments, uh, landmark buildings, they all have been built privately. The best uh, perinatal center in the country. It cost four and a half billion rubles. Phenomenal center. It was built by private funds. More than 10 uh, swimming pools are under construction, also financed privately. Uh, we, the administration process uh, for the key projects, namely getting building permits, etc., it takes only six months, not two, two and a half years, as in other places. But again, it's uh, it's a result of macro management. Uh, we we take those those projects and we macro manage them and we offer the best terms and conditions for them but i'm 100 percent certain that if the state the federal authorities uh fail to work with larger cities fail to regulate larger cities we will all depend on on luck you know whether we're lucky enough or not lucky enough uh, there should be a state policy for the development of cities you know let them take 20, 30, 100 cities, but those cities should be the uh, focal point for resources. Nowadays, we have a policy of uh, even development of territories, but it's not policy. It's a no-go because even uh, experience of other countries shows that we need to uh, make a focus on the, on the breakthrough cities, on the most dynamic cities. Thank you. I would like to ask Mr. Wysokowski the Dean of the uh, Higher School of Urban Studies to provide his perspective and his comments on this topic. I've always thought that uh, the topic of management is a key one in terms of the state of urban uh, area, urban state. Of course, uh, different things happen uh, in urban development area. A lot of things depend on people, climate, natural conditions, on communication systems, on business environment, so on the location of the city. Still, management of, from all these factors, the factor of urban management is one of the key ones, uh, as it seems to me. And uh, that's the area which allows us to uh, to tweak, to improve the situation, uh, to f uh, to fine tune the situation. Uh, that means, to me, it means three things. First, need to consolidate resources between all uh, levels of budgets in the public sphere. That's the key, most dramatic issue when it comes to interaction. One uh, one region, uh, uh, some governors, some regions uh, manage to do that, are successful to pull resources together for the construction of an airport or some other large infrastructure or facility. In, in other cases, they fail to do so. And of course, you can point fingers, uh, you can blame each other, you know, but the result is that uh, there's lack of consolidated resources and the project failed. As I was listening to you, you are right, you're very correct in saying how the region and city should interact with each other at the planning stage, at the strategic planning stage. I think, I think that's the way we should uh, cooperate at the level of implementation. Because planning, discussing goals and objectives, it's all clear. But when it comes to implementation, uh, oftentimes it becomes clear that deciding between different facilities or different developments and which development to sponsor, to finance, how to balance the interests of the municipality and the gubernatorial's office, 
uh, these issues uh, require the same level of interaction and cooperation. And the same goes for agglomeration. Uh, everybody knows, let us be honest, we live in this system of system administrative division uh, in this managerial system. Uh, it's, it's, we live in a somewhat anachronistic system. Uh, the world already has uh, metropolitan uh, areas uh, which allow for management, statistical studies, statistical accounting. Of course, to uh, manage agglomeration projects nowadays is quite difficult if these processes involve different levels of authorities with different interests. I understand that changing boundaries, uh, administrative boundaries, is is a very painful issue, is, uh, is an unwelcome issue. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not urging you to do so. I'm urging you to do a different thing, uh, to understand that the natural conflict has something to do with the fact that agglomeration is split up by different uh, management levels. That's why it requires uh, special technologies that would reflect interests of various stakeholders, governor, mayor, uh, all mayors uh, of the cities, municipalities in the agglomeration, and that makes it even more complicated. Well, the third ver a very important point that I wanted to make is the redistribution of authority. As far as I remember, I think it was federal law number 136, which laid the foundation for the redistribution of authorities. And I think it's now vesting these authorities in the, at, at the level of regional uh, administration. I believe it is absolutely horrendous. I think that it would be quite impossible being a regional authority to basically um, find decisions for territorial development, land use, land development. I believe that this issue should be resolved at the local uh, level. But I do believe that the governors will actually redelegate this authority to the uh, level of local administration. And what if it doesn't happen? And what if the Moscow region creates the level of chief architectural bureau, the chief architect, so which will basically make decisions uh, related to the local level. I think it will be very difficult from a technical point of view, because in order to basically accept uh, this um, land development design, so all of the architectural authorities should come up with a summary judgment whether, you know, the compliance was maintained and so on and so forth. How can it be done at a um, level of, um, of the governor's office, especially if we're talking about a completely different city? I think that all of this gives us an objective reason to believe that when we're talking about at all levels of public authority, we have to say that it is not only one of the key issues, but it is also a very painful issue for all of us. I am very happy to listen to the experience of all of my colleagues who actually managed to find this possibility for cooperation at different levels of uh, public administration. I'm very happy to hear that my colleagues managed to procure the resources in order to come up with uh, a coordinated development strategy. And that is why I believe that when it comes to the development of a certain area, especially if it is driven by the interests of the citizens and not the citizens of the actual cities, but also by people who transit through the cities, so they're also vital for the development. I do believe that coordination and cooperation issues between public authorities are key. We have to always remember this and we have to strive and achieve everything we can in this regard. Thank you very much, Stanislav. I have a question to all of the participants of our discussion. So if any of you would like to voice your position on the reform of local self-governments, 
or local self-administration. So a lot of us believe that the reform is focusing on giving more authority to the regions as opposed to local administrations, but maybe we can find something positive in the proposed reform. Maybe there'll be some positive effects when it comes to the reform. Evgeny? Distinguished colleagues, one more time, let me say the same old adage, we have to call a spade a spade. I do believe that the municipal reform was rather unprepared. It was hastily done. It was uh, done in the Caucasus and wasn't a uh, subject of a public debate. But I do believe that the reform of local administration is basically striving to eliminate the direct election of mayors. The second issue is that when we talk about the reform of local administration, another focus of the reform is to act through the appointed governors and to grant access to Mo Moscow industrial groups uh, to the resources of other cities in the Russian Federation with a population of over one million citizens. I think that these are two main objectives of the reform. What happened next? especially when we talk about the redistribution of authorities, the creation of municipal districts, so the division of large cities into larger municipal districts. I, I do believe it's quite harmful. For now, we only have a pilot project in Chelyabinsk, uh, but they don't even have a budget for 2015. Yekaterinburg is resisting this initiative because we did manage to move away from this division 20 years ago, and the only way we were able to achieve a breakthrough was due to reasonably economically driven decisions, but right now they are offering us to take a couple of steps back, but we still do not understand how it's going to function. Some of the districts operate with a profit, some with a loss. Who is going to finance a huge number of MPs? Who is going to finance the new administration? So we're talking about uh, ever-increasing costs. I talked to the member of Genoa, and he told me that they're cutting down the number of municipalities in Italy from 8,000 to 1,000, mostly because of the costs. The budget is cracking under the cost, and all of a sudden we are proposing such an expansion. I do believe that it is nonsense, but that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Anyone else? If you'd allow me, I, I think I'd like to mention more pragmatic things. Doesn't matter what the reform is, whether it's a reform of the energy sector or local administration, we always have to evaluate how the reform will impact the citizens of our city. And basically, in my city, we try to set global objectives we try to achieve global objectives and i think it's a bit of a fashion nowadays to score a major sporting event or a major political event but i think what's more important and what we tend to forget is the quality of life in a city how does every citizen evaluate the quality of his or her life in the city. I think that this is something that should be decided by professionals. So when we discuss hypothetical de urban development models, so transportation, logistics, urban planning, and so on and so forth, basically, these are just the pieces of the mosaic. But what we have to understand is how do we make it comfortable for our citizens? How do we make sure that the city life is enjoyable for everyone who is living in it. When, once we started looking at this problem, we realized that we do not really have enough analytical data. That is why now we are cooperating with academics. We are conducting a lot of surveys trying to understand what's interesting for our citizens, what um, people are talking about, what concerns the students, the unemployed. And what's more important here is that a lot of the problems that are being discussed in mass media do not actually 
have anything to do with real life. So having conducted the surveys, we're getting a new understanding of what we should finance. Let me tell you about one project that so we're uh, trying to implement so while we are installing free workouts around the cities as you know people are drinking less vodka and exercising more so we basically installed a lot of outdoor gyms around the city and that initiated a very substantial youth movement and it doesn't cost us a lot you know we do not really need to invest into an enormous stadium which will remain empty but what we have to do we have to install outdoor gyms around the city another thing is city lighting and here ufa was really lagging behind if we compare it to other cities with one million inhabitants so we had we had a small number of lighting posts around the city but we are going to increase to 56000 lighting posts so basically we are not just trying to light up the streets, but so we are trying to light up the routes that people travel, you know, areas around schools, around kindergartens, around playgrounds, and so on and so forth. So once we start doing this, then our citizens are not just criticizing the administration, but they are more positive because they see the actual things that we are doing. But what's very important is the monitoring of public opinion. In January, only 30% of the citizens of UFA were saying that the authorities are performing, and in August, 70%. Of course, my, it might be that they're eating more fruit and getting more vitamins and feeling happier, but in any case, I think that it is quite an achievement for city administration. Thank you very much. some more feedback well, well i would like to continue what eric was saying i would like to say that this year bashkortostan republic together with the world bank develop a project to support local initiative as you probably know there is this persistent opinion public opinion that so we do not have enough uh, municipal funding to create comfortable and satisfying um, city environments urban environments but i have to tell you that our experience has shown that if we start attracting the public or involving the public into the decision making then the public responds very positively the public participates in this project and what's even more important the public even takes part in financing of this project so basically we worked with uh, seven constituent areas and 40 percent of all of the funds uh, for smaller projects some of them are, are related uh, to I don't know, the renovation of a playground and so on and so forth, smaller projects. So 40% of all of the funding was given to us by the population. So a lot of people say that it's a unique case. Some of, uh, some of our critics say that it's a bit paternalistic. But what we concluded is that we have to be more proactive in asking our citizens what is it that they want. We have to show the citizens that we're trying to do everything to meet their expectations. We need to involve the population into this process. Then, of course, what we'll get in the end, we'll get a more satisfied population, we'll get citizens who are loyal to public administration. and. Another thing is that when people actually take part in making the decisions, and of course, they'll have a completely different understanding of their environment. Thank you very much, Alexander. I think I have uh, one more question, and then we will move to the Q&A uh, session. But the question is management of regional and municipal administrations. Can a municipal administration create such a relationship with the business community so that they're not really dependent on the regional and federal subsidies? Can a city become an independent economic entity? 
or would you say that in the current budget situation any city will always be dependent on regional administration? Well, dear colleagues, I just I would like just to add a little bit. The financial policy is basically a disciplining tool, so you know beg and then we'll get uh, you'll get it so if you do not vote the way you're supposed to then you will not get the funding that you want so you, this is something that we have to understand from the start so i think the system is organized in this way and a lot of people are afraid of cities but a city again is an attraction point is a point of growth a city is something that has a lot of uh, scientific research, creative potential, but it's not very easy to coordinate with a city. You have to take into account public opinion, you have to advocate, you have to, you have to make everything to make sure that you're able to achieve the objective. So that's why you have to treat large cities with respect. If uh, a city is strong, then the country is strong. But once a regional administration is weaker than the municipal one, once it is trying to, it tries to discipline the municipal administration, well, now you know that, you know, lawsuits are becoming an instrument of political management. The second mechanism there is, you know, cutting of the funding but this is a very destructive policy of course it is easier uh, to govern people who are poor or have no rights but we saw in the 1990s that the country managed to survive because of the large cities the cities which managed to function provides heat lights and everything else so we have to change our attitude towards cities thank you very much Okay, now we have time for some of the questions from the audience. And I'm sorry I cannot hear the question without a microphone. Well, it was very interesting for me to listen to my colleague, but of course they are very differing opinions. For instance, you know, let me present my dissenting opinion. I come from a technical background. My colleague is a public figure, a political figure, but. In any case, it doesn't really matter that much. What we have to understand is that if we do not really manage to create a system in this country when cities being the main growth drivers of the Russian Federation, let's say we designate a hundred of such cities, the cities where we would direct financial administrative resources so the population does not leave the cities but so that the people come back into the system. So unless we manage to achieve this, we will not achieve any sort of economic or political breakthrough in the Russian Federation. Of course we can debate the forms and the formats of such a policy but I think that we should leave it to the professionals and we probably should have invited representatives from the federal administration because we cannot discuss any municipal issues without discussing it with regional and federal authorities or the representatives from the executive power so we have to create system-based approaches now the system is that some Cities might be lucky, some might not be so. Some cities might have strong leaders, some cities might have weak ones, but it's not a system based approach. That will only give us two or three percent of growth, maybe five or six if we are lucky, but this is not the correct way to operate. So if we do not manage to stop the outflow of talented youth 
from our cities, doesn't matter where they're going, then uh, we can debate it at nauseum, but we will achieve nothing. So the main criterion, criterion that for us should be that if somebody leaves a city, they would like to come back because they know that while they were away, the city became better and more comfortable. That's what we've been trying to do in UFA. We had very positive birth rate dynamics for the last six years. We had very positive migration results. People are coming to UFA from Western Siberia, Sverdlovsk, from the Far East. So people come buy apartments in UFA because they find our city very comfortable. Oh, and I'm not complaining about the funding, but if we do increase the funding, let's look at Ekaterinburg. Let's say the federal government decides to give additional funding to Ekaterinburg. So they say let's give them 100 billion to Ekaterinburg, 200 billion to Perm. But if the federal administration understands that by giving the money they get a completely new quality of life, then it changes everything. So thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to answer this comment. Uh, the federal authorities actually were invited to this session. Uh, we invited somebody from the institute that uh, drafts uh, uh, local self-governance reforms. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it. The federal ministries, as such, do not have departments dealing with the development of cities. They don't have units responsible for this area. So that's why we don't have anybody from the ministries, because everything is done at the regional level. That was the starting point of our discussion today. So there's a slight uh, problem who we should work with at the federal level. Uh, I would like to take a couple more questions from the, f from the audience. Uh, with your permission, uh, is it working? OK. You know, since we are in Moscow, uh, nobody, n nothing has been said about Moscow. I would like to um, say that I truly envy Ufa and Yekaterinburg and the Republic of Bashkortostan. Uh, I envy you for having uh, among the leaders of those regions uh, people who are so much in love with their respective cities and regions. We face different phenomenon in Moscow. We, everybody is trying to come to Moscow and unfortunately the city of Moscow is managed by non-Moscovites and you can't imagine how, how difficult it is. I'm a Moscow architect. I'm a native Moscovite and I do not have any contact with either the mayor's office or the construction uh, department even though I spent all my life working at Moscom Architectura. I'm sorry, what, what's your question? Okay, my question is, we, we have a problem in Moscow, why we're not talking about it? Why we're not saying that, okay, you mentioned agglomeration. Agglomeration is a Western word. It comes from the Western vocabulary. because the Institute of General Plan has always worked with the uh, city of Moscow and agglomeration. Could you please uh, introduce yourself? Zoya Vasilna Kharitonova, distinguished architect of Russia. I would like to answer your question, why we're not talking about Moscow. This conference uh, deals with the regional cities of Russia. As part of the forum, we have three thrusts, three agendas, a global agenda, Uh, that tackles global developments, development of cities in other countries. We have a regional agenda uh, which tackles and addresses development of regional centers. And we have Moscow City agenda that will be, uh, will take place tomorrow. So I think it would be right for you to come to the sessions tomorrow. You'll be able to raise these questions. Thank you so much. Any further question? Okay, the final question. Thank you. By Nava Maria Sergeyevna, 
I teach of state municipal management uh, in Jermaine's mayor's statement. Uh, you, you you mentioned that th there should be training. As since I'm in charge of training, what qualities among managers, city managers, will be most requisite? So, what disciplines we should uh, we should teach our students? So question, question to the mayors. I'm, I'm not a mayor, but I will try to answer a question. Yes, we have a, a sharp shortage, uh, and this is happening at the regional level, at the municipal level. So we need project managers. The whole world, the whole business has already uh, shifted to projects, to project basis. We haven't. Uh, we are trying to do something, not to accomplish something. So uh, project managers will make a world of difference in this. Another question from the audience. The cities that are not as lucky with the mayors. So uh, can we ask where, what? training programs can be offered to the leaders, to the managers uh, that lack in experience and knowledge in large city management. Are there any materials published? Uh, will you prepare any training courses? Because in 2012, following the 2012 forum, you invited city mayors and you distributed a brochure, uh, 33 top global projects. And I I've been, I hear that some of the people followed your advice and have actually done something, have accomplished something, something. But uh, it's, it's, but those are exceptions, not the general rule. What city do you represent? Uh, I'm from Nizhny Novgorod. Really, I'm scared to say that. Why? Why are you so scared to say that? It's a beautiful city. Uh, uh, speaking about the. Uh, Training programs and lectures, uh, most of them will be conducted on the 13th as part of the Open Festival program. And uh, in the run up to the fourth Moscow Urban Forum, uh, several studies had been conducted. One of the studies dealt with, it was done by Nova Zimlia Company, uh, it was done jointly with the Higher School of Economics. Alexander Kajvisakovsky presented a report. We did a report, a study uh, on the regional development of Russian cities and the development, their, their, their human resource potential, the human potential. Uh, these materials uh, have been presented at the forum, uh, in printed form, in, 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 uh, and there are other uh, materials. Uh, related to master planning. All these materials are, are available in Russian and in English as part of this forum. I would like to say one thing. Uh, speaking about cities, large cities, a lot of myths, illusions, uh, starting from the city economy uh, and all the way to educational programs. Why? Uh, I'll try to under explain to you. Many of you have gone through the Soviet education school, uh, finished uh, high school, university, and then went to uh, landed your first job. As a famous stand-up comedian Reichen said, uh, you got to forget everything you've taught at school, you've learned at school uh, once you start working. Uh, I spent 10 years in business. I, you know, had a different companies, uh, traders companies, construction companies. And I thought, when I was in business, I thought that I knew everything. I was on top of things. And I even if you uh, take a five-year course for municipal uh, employees, unless you have practical experience, it will amount to nothing. OK, a situation, a case study, minus 30, uh, pipe burst, heat pipe burst. How can that program teach uh, a, a municipal employee how to make an effective decision? Because dozens of special services are involved in this incident, starting from law enforcement agents all the way to a heat supply company. So there should be a system, a training system, 
uh, for, for, for human resources. All other things, all the trainings, etc., it should 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 supplement the practice. So practice is the key thing. Uh, you cannot just uh, parachute somebody from uh, a degree uh, onto a position and expect him to perform well. Thank you. Any comment to this? Alexander Arkadyevich, just very briefly. Uh, we represent Higher School of Economics, and we have a very nice faculty, uh, state municipal management, or state municipal administration, and uh, our higher school of urban studies is also an educational establishment. Um, and in your words, I heard, I sensed uh, reproach in toward us. Uh, we're trying to train to teach young people, uh, but I agree. I think it's. Uh, I think we should start uh, practical training. Uh, we should launch practical training courses for uh, senior executives of the regions and the cities uh, in, the, in, the, in the regional city administrations. While maybe it will sound as dissonance, uh, there will never be training f f at the higher education level. You will, we cannot expect people with higher education to immediately uh, hit the ground running. But if you lean on practice, uh, towards practice, you will lose out on theoretical issues. It, you will s the, there's a certain trade-off between practice and theory. Even though we're called National Research University because we are engaged in numerous practical projects strategy drafting, strategy development for different regions and cities. And we try to uh, use theoretical foundation for that so that practice shouldn't be limited to case studies. It should be part of the broader understanding. And the uh, higher education, per se, should be linked to, uh, uh, to professional education uh, because every three years state employees uh, should go to uh, retraining courses and people usually forget about those retraining courses and the, the, the stuff that is taught to them uh, so if we all subject all these things to specific goals by the way Nizhny Novgorod are you from Nizhny Novgorod we have a branch in Nizhny Novgorod, probably they haven't uh, they haven't uh, they haven't spread their uh, sacred knowledge to across your region yet. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more question. The final question. Uh, okay, if there are no questions, any comments from the panelists? I would like. You know, it just occurred to me. Uh, I thought that it could be such a great initiative if we have a retraining course or additional education course in our at our university but with your involvement with your participation so that our uh, so that we could uh, put our theory to test in your regions uh, you can send your employees to our university and we can forward your employees to other regions so they can apply their theoretical uh, knowledge uh, in practical context. If you're interested, we can, uh, you know, have such a joint educational project. I would like to officially invite you, your colleagues, to our city. Uh, I'm ready to mix theory with practice. I can tell you that municipal employees uh, lack in practical experience. Uh, speaking about the higher echelons of administration, the situation is somewhat better. But as regards the mid-level and low level, the, the grassroots level, the, the entry level, that's, 
that's where we have the most difficult situation. That's where people like experience. That's where we need to focus our teaching effort. It's not so much the efforts, natural resources, uh, or money that solve situations. Um, it is the brains. It is the talents. It is the people who will be working in the uh, municipal authorities, city authorities, people who will come to work uh, who will not just run the wave of populism. Uh, maybe we will we will need such events with a positive agenda. Russia and the Soviet Union uh, has always been a smart nation because we're all smart people individually. I think the uh, most important thing for us to be smart uh, together. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, the speakers. I think we need to wrap up our session. I would like to thank the audience for interesting questions. I hope that we'll meet again, discuss this topic. Uh, most important thing is that we raise the questions uh, because uh, this conference of Russian cities is taking place for the first part as part of the Moscow Urban Forum. And we. Uh, uh, we think that cities are the, the, the backbone of the country, the backbone of the nation. Uh, cities should become important points for administration. They should be independent. They should be independent systems of administration. So I would like to invite you to visit the exhibition. Uh, which. Uh, also presents the findings of the regional of uh, the development of regional cities we'll have a short coffee break and would like to invite you uh, to the final session following the coffee break